Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at reading files in Java using file reader and buffered reader. And this is kind of the old way of reading files. And you can read files using the scanner class, which is a bit less cumbersome. And there are also some new language features in Java 7, which we're probably going to look at in the next tutorial that make this a lot nicer. But the stuff that I'm going to show you here at the moment is still really important to know, partly because it will still work even if you're using Java 6, as many people are, and partly because this is at the beginning of 2013 anyway, and partly because you can change the code that we've got here and adapt it so that it will read um, files in all kinds of different formats, like binary format or a different kind of text format to the, the standard. So what we're going to write now is very flexible, even though it's cumbersome. So the first thing is we need some kind of text file to read, and we're just going to look at text files here. And I won't repeat um, the remarks that I made in the tutorial on reading files with Scanner about where to locate your file, but I'll just create a file. I'll right-click the project and create a file here in the project folder called test.txt, which we're going to work with here rather than specifying a full file path. I'm just going to put it where the program can find it easily. And let's put in here first line, second line, third line, and that'll do. And I'll save that, so it's just a text file. And I'll create a file object that can read that file. Let's say file, file equals new file, and test.txt. So the file object is a platform independent way of representing a file that doesn't pretend, that doesn't depend on any particular um, kind of path specification. Like it doesn't care whether it's forward slashes or back slashes in there or whatever. It's, uh, it just represents your file on, on any system. And then we need to read that file. So I'm going to use a file reader. Uh, because the file represents the file, but it doesn't provide you with convenient methods for reading it. So I'm going to use the file reader, and I'll call this fr. And usually I don't, um, usually it's bad practice to use two letters for a object in Java. You should spell it out more than this. But we're only going to refer to this really temporarily. And this is such, this has become such a kind of idiom of, uh, in Java that it's not so bad just to use two letters in this particular instance. And I'm going to pass the file to the constructor of file reader and do control shift O to add the import for file reader. And now file reader will try to open the file, but it throws a file not found exception if it can't do it. So let's handle that exception by surrounding with try catch. I just click the error there. And here let's say sysal file file not found because if you're going to distribute this to an end user they don't want to see a stack trace they want to see file not found so that they know what the problem is and it's also crucially important to, to say what file has not been found so let's say file dot to string to get the file name there so the user can see what file has not been found because if a program just says file not found and doesn't tell you which file from the end user's point of view, that's a total nightmare. How are, how are they ever going to know what file that is? So you should always tell them which file has not been found. Now, File Reader lets you read the file, but only in a quite inconvenient way. If you want, if you want to read it line by line, you also need another class because this only lets you read it um, so many chars at a time. Let's say what we want to do is we want to save up. Um, the chars that we read, the characters that we read from the file, and um, we want to process them one line full at a time. And when you kind of save data up like that and process it in useful kind of bytes, then that, that's called buffering. So we want to do buffering, and to do that, we want to use buffered reader here. So buffered reader, let's call this br equals new buffered buffered reader and we pass in fr, the file reader, for it to work with. So that's three classes there, like a kind of Russian doll thing, and I'll add the import there. 
so we've got buffered reader on top and then underneath that file reader and underneath that we've got file and I'm going to declare a string here um, and this is just a reference I'm not going to actually create a string and this reference is going to point to each line in the file in turn and to do that well I can do stuff like line equals buffered reader dot read line and that throws a another exception it throws an IO exception so let's click the error here and go to add catch clause to surrounding try to add another catch clause and then here I can say sysout unable to read file and file dot to string so in the first case here it can't open the file and here it could open the file but for some reason it's just not able to read it it's corrupted or it's got the wrong permissions on it or something and if I now do sysout sysout line and I run that we're going to see here um, I can't actually find the file what did I do wrong I called it test I call it text.text let's right click that and go to refactor rename and I want to actually call this um, choose destination okay something's going horribly wrong what I'll do is I'll just copy that and close that and delete it and let's just recreate it with the right name so right click the project new file test.txt is what I wanted to call it paste this stuff in there save it run the program and now we've read one line from the file we've read read the first line so when every time we call buffered reader dot read line we're going to read one line from the file and we want to actually read all the lines from the file and to do that we have to enclose this in a while loop and uh, we want the while loop to stop when the line is equal to null and we can use a kind of slightly strange feature of the Java language to accomplish that we say while and there, th there's the opening bracket of the while loop and we put this whole thing the actual reading of the line itself in round brackets and we say while that is not equal to null and then close the bracket of this while loop here so if you put this whole thing in brackets like that that evaluates to um, whatever was assigned to line here and we're checking then that that is not equal to null so this is not really intuitive but it does the trick and then finally we can put the brackets on the while loop and we can move this sys out into inside the while loop like that so now we're going to read the lines from the file one at a time and we run that and we see we've read the lines from the file and you could use um, it would be inefficient to have like one big string and to do plus equals and concatenate these lines to a big string because st once you create a, a string it's immutable and it never changes and when you use plus equals with a string it's actually creating a brand new string every time so if you wanted to collect all your lines in one place and you have to be careful of memory considerations if it's a big file but you, you should use a string builder to do that rather than using plus equals with a string now the outstanding and remaining problem here is that we haven't closed this buffered reader and we, we might get problems potentially with uh, with um, open file handles if we do this a lot I'm not sure if Java will actually close it automatically possibly but if you certainly if you're reading a lot of files in your program then you need to close them to avoid memory leaks and stuff like that so if we see this warning here it says BR is never closed now the question is where do we close this um, buffered reader if we close the buffered reader it will automatically close the file reader and I don't know if a file technically needs closing but it will close everything up the chain above it so we only have to close this last one we have to close call the close method because this is opening the file and we want to close it again by calling buffered reader dot close which closes this which also closes this 
But where do we call bufferedreader.close? If you put it down here, bufferedreader.close, br.close, then we've got a problem and it's going to say that br cannot be resolved. And that's because when you declare a variable in Java, the scope of it is limited to the curly brackets around it. And this is declared within these curly brackets. So it doesn't exist down here. And what we need to do is declare this outside of those curly brackets. So I'm just going to do control X and I'll just put BR here. So I've cut that to the clipboard and now I can paste it up here. And let's put the semicolon in and uh, save it. And now the error has changed. If we look at this, it says unhandled exception, type IO exception, because close can bizarrely fail. And in that case, it will throw an IO exception. So let's click this surround with try catch and um, we're catching the IO exception. Now there's still a problem. Let's have a look at that. And it's saying the local variable BR may not have been initialized. So we haven't, if we throw an error here, this, if this throws an exception, we never execute this line because when you throw an exception, it immediately goes into the catch block down here. So then that wouldn't have any value. And then we're trying to call close on something that has no value, which we can't do. So we can make it shut up by saying br equals null. And then it goes quiet and it looks fine. And if we run it, then it's fine. But supposing it can't open the file, if I let's add another character to the file name and run that. Now it says null pointer exception, and I click this error here, and, it, and this is throwing a null pointer exception. That's because this is throwing an exception. It can't open the file, so this is still null. And um, it's, what it's telling us, what Java is telling us, is that this is, we're trying to call close on something that's null, which gives us a null pointer exception, which we're not forced to handle, but we can handle it if we want to. So let's handle it. And we could add another catch clause here to catch null pointer exception. But perhaps the easiest thing to do is, well, is it the easiest? It depends on your perspective. We could put a message in here saying can't close file. Although the user might not care about not being able to close files. But let's put a message in here and let's say can't unable to close file and you, you kind of have to decide whether it's worth telling your user about that because most users of software if they see a message saying can't close the file well they didn't even know that the file needed closing so to them that will be an obscure error message so you might you might not want to put in an error message there you might just want to write this to a log file or something and now we could change this to exception and because if we throw a null pointer exception, it would here, it would then be caught by, if we had this just like this, it would be caught by this as well. But then it would be wrongly saying unable to close file when in fact the problem was the file could not be opened. So let's not do that. Let's just go here, put another catch in, catch null pointer exception x. And let's just say here, um, well, why should we say anything? So let's not. And usually you should put something in here when you handle an exception. But in here, it's, it's likely that this is being thrown because the file was probably never opened. I don't see how that could not be the case, really. So um, yeah, if, if the file's not open, this will throw a null pointer exception because it'll still be null, but we'll catch it here. And let's run that now. And now we see it says file not found, and there's no further errors, which is very nice. Although, of course, if you put x dot print stack trace in here, then you would see the error. So um, we haven't got any print stack traces in here. So we're, not, we're only seeing our own custom error output, like these, which is good. So now this works. And now if I delete this character here, then we can run it. Now this is all good, but if you follow a university course in Java, or if you look at a lot of books, 
they, they will tell you to do it slightly differently just because here I'm assuming that you want to handle error and print stuff out here but you might actually want to re-throw the error this is probably not going to this code is probably not going to be in your main program and it might be in some method somewhere and you might want to throw the error again here re-throw the exception or even throw a different exception here to signal further up the stack further up the the hierarchy of method calls that something has gone wrong and you could handle this somewhere else with a dialog box or something. So you don't always want to just catch this here and, and then carry on to execute this. You might want to exit your method with an, another throw here or something like that. And what we can do is we can put a finally block in here like this and finally is always guaranteed to be executed. So whether this runs okay or whether one of these lines throws an exception, the finally block at the end here, at the end of the catch clauses, will always be executed every time. The only way it won't be executed is if, let's say there's a nuclear explosion which vaporizes your computer, or more likely, your computer stops working. But if the program executes successfully, this will be, this will be run, even if exceptions are thrown. So let's just move this into the finally block and this is uh, usually how you'll be told to do this on a university course it will usually look like this and now we've got the same thing as before and if the file's not found then it just gives us a nice error message so that's it for this time it's a hell of a lot to absorb but uh, this is a very flexible way of reading a file and in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use Java 7 to simplify this a lot and really make it a lot nicer because if you think this is clunky you're absolutely right it looks really like um, well it looks like a pig's ear or a donkey's ass or a rat's nest almost perhaps not a rat's nest but it is ugly and this is one of the worst things in Java the way that the exceptions tend to get nested and tend to build up and clutter your code so there is a language feature in Java 7 that we can use to simplify this and we'll look at that in the next tutorial. But that's all for this time, and this code will be on caverprogramming.com. Until next time, happy coding.